Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at fluid balance. And the first place to begin is reminiscing back to chemistry class. Do you remember sitting there, peering at that giant poster on the wall called the periodic table, which contains all the ingredients that we need to make everything in the universe? Did you ever sit back, look at it and think, how many of those ingredients or elements do I need to make a human? Well, the answer to that is around about 59 of those elements we need to make your eye. But in actual fact, to make around about 99% of you, we only need six of those elements. Those six elements include, in no particular order, oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, phosphorus, and calcium. That's it. These six make up around about 99% of you. And in actual fact, if I were to take two of these, oxygen and hydrogen, you'll find that they make up around about 75% of you. Most of the oxygen and hydrogen is actually snapped together in the form of H2O, which we know is water. Which means around about 60% of you is water. So what would that be? You can calculate that, right? So I'm a 70 kilogram male, 70 kilograms times 60% equals 42 kilograms. I have 42 kilograms of water inside of my body. Where does this water sit? Well, I'm not just a bag of water where it fills me from the feet up. It's actually delegated or relegated to particular compartments. What are these compartments? Well, there's actually just two major compartments. It's the area inside the cells, which we call the intracellular fluid, or it's the area outside the cells, which has two subcompartments. The area outside the cell is called the extracellular fluid, and it's made up of the area outside the cells but between the cells called the interstitial fluid and the area inside of our blood vessels, which we call plasma. So you can see the various compartments of our body that contain water is inside the cells called the intracellular fluid or outside the cell called the extracellular fluid made up of two compartments, the interstitial fluid which sits outside the cells but between the cells and also the blood plasma. So how does this 42 kilograms fit within each of these compartments? All right, so of the 42, you will find that 28 liters of that sits inside the cells. That's two thirds. 11 liters sits in the interstitial area and three liters sits in our plasma. So two thirds of our entire body water sit inside of our cells. The rest sitting outside in those two compartments. What I wanna do now is take a look at how do we maintain this 60% water? How do we not lose too much? How do we not gain too much? What does the body do to maintain a balance? So what I've done is I've taken this and I've redrawn it out here to show how we can take things in. So intake, and how we can lose this water. So loss. So let's divide this up into these three particular compartments. So the first compartment I wanna do is that of plasma. So here is the plasma. Next is gonna be the interstitial fluid. Interstitial. And then the next is going to be intracellular. I, C, F. Now a couple of things that you can see here is that when we intake water, the first place it's really gonna go is the plasma. And when we excrete this water, 
The last of the three compartments it's gonna be associated with is the plasma as well. Keep that in mind. The other thing is that in order for fluid to go from plasma to interstitial to intracellular, it has to go through various membranes, semi-permeable membranes. So this one here for plasma, it's this membrane here, which is the capillary membrane. So here at the capillary membrane, What can get through this capillary membrane? It's semi-permeable, we need to know this. So what can get through the capillary membrane? Let's actually say what can't get through, it makes it easier. What can't get through generally are cells and large proteins. They can't get through. So cells and large proteins will stay in this plasma, not necessarily crossing through to the interstitial area, the area outside the cells. But to go from the interstitial to inside the cells, you need to cross another membrane, which is this membrane here called the phospholipid bilayer. Let's write that down, phospholipid bilayer. And the phospholipid bilayer is another semi-permeable membrane. What can't get through? I always say the mantra, if it's large or charged, it's not getting through. So that means proteins won't get through. That means ions won't get through. It charged atoms or elements like sodium, potassium, magnesium, for example, they won't freely pass through. So that's another important point. So before we move on to things like electrolytes, let's talk about the water. Remember I said that from the plasma, around about three liters of the water is sitting here, 11 liters here, at the interstitial, and around about 28 litres here. All right. So let's now take a look at different ways that we can bring fluid into the body. So we know that we can bring fluid in through the food that we eat and whatever we may drink. And if you were to calculate how much you bring in per day, it's around about 2,100 mils per day around about 2.1 litres. Another way is through carbon metabolism. Carbon metabolism. So remember, glucose is a carbon-based molecule. We metabolize it at the electron transport chain of the mitochondria, and we produce water doing this. So carbon metabolism. And how much do we bring in through carbon metabolism? Around about 200 mils of water per day, which is a fair bit. So cumulatively, how much are we taking in? Around about 2,300 mils of water per day. So how much do we lose then per day? Well, let's take a look. Firstly, how, what are the different ways that we can lose fluid? Well, you can have something called insensible, insensible fluid loss. Now, insensible fluid loss includes, it occurs mainly from our lungs, so breathing, and through our skin. Let's just write lungs down. Now, how much do we lose through our lungs through breathing? We lose around about 700 mils. 700 mils per day, just from breathing. So remember, when you bring in oxygen, and bring out carbon dioxide, it becomes humidified. So water molecules get attached to it, so you breathe out water. Now, you can also have sweating. And if you're not doing any exercise, it's probably around about 100 mils per day. But if you are doing a lot of exercise, that can be one to two liters, which means if that increases, you're gonna to have to increase the amount of fluid you drink to balance it out, right? Now, Insensible loss, we're simply talking about mainly here through our lungs. Now, sweating, that's loss, and feces is another loss. Feces, and we lose another 100 mils of water per day through our feces. So together we've got 900 mils of loss here. Now the last way that we lose is through our kidneys. So we obviously pee stuff out. So we lose stuff through our kidneys. That's around about 1.4 liters. So let's write this the way we've written it. 1,400 mils per day. 
Now, if we were to calculate all this, what you're going to find is that the loss per day, 2,300 mils per day. So this is fluid gained, this is fluid lost. And this fluid, water, can move from plasma to interstitial, no problem. From interstitial to intracellular fluid, no problem. But there are things that influence the movement of water from these compartments, which is the most important. These predominantly are ions. Sodium, potassium, magnesium, chloride, for example, they influence the way water moves inside and outside of the cell and between these compartments. How? Let's take a look. Firstly, let's go back and talk about the fact that water making up 60% of your body is oxygen and hydrogen snapped together. So let's have a look at that. It's H2O. So there's a hydrogen, there's another hydrogen, there's an oxygen. And it's actually bound together in this boomerang-like shape where the hydrogens have a slight positive charge associated with them and the oxygen has a slight negative charge. What do you know about charges? Well, negatives love positives, positives love negatives. So anything with a charge is going to love water and vice versa. Water is going to love anything with a charge, which means when you ingest certain foods, remember I said to make up a person, you need six of those elements to make up 99% of you. The rest can include some trace minerals, things like sodium, things like calcium, things like magnesium. And when they enter the body, they gain a charge. It can either be a positive or negative charge. So for example, sodium, once it's inside the body, it's Na+. Chloride is Cl negative. Magnesium, Mg2+. Calcium, Ca2+. These are just some examples of ions. But because they have a charge, water loves it. The positive charge loves the negative oxygen. The negative charges love the positive hydrogen. So they are attracted to one another. But think about this. If I start to ingest a whole bunch of, let's just take sodium for example. I ingest a whole bunch of sodium and bring it in. It first goes where? Into my plasma. Now, can it cross from the plasma to the interstitial? Yes, because the only thing that can't is cells and proteins. So this sodium freely diffuses to the interstitium. Now I've got a high concentration of sodium here. Can the sodium freely move from the interstitium into the cell? Well, no. It's not large, it's just an atom, right? But it is charged. So this does not happen. It cannot move through freely into the cell. Which means if you continually ingest or, doesn't necessarily mean ingest, do anything that changes the concentration of sodium in the interstitial area here. So let's just say we have more insensible water loss through sweating. The fluid volume in these two areas are going to drop. Which means if there's sodium in here, concentration wise, this, it's gone up. Now you might be thinking, what are you referring to? Think about this as just a, a bucket of water. Think about your interstitial area as a bucket of water with some sodium in it. Now, what if you were to simply take the water out so that there was a lot less water in here? Well, the concentration of that sodium has gone up. It was originally three particles per, say, five litres to now three particles per three litres. The concentration has gone up. And that's what can happen here through excessive sweating. You might say, but don't we lose sodium and sweat? We do, but we often lose more water than we do sodium. You lose both, but often you can lose more water. You can also lose it through insensible loss. So there might be some people in intensive care who have intratracheal tubes and a machine's breathing for them, sucking out a lot of that water, making them dehydrated, which means the concentration of these ions in the interstitial area like sodium, it goes up. But... That sodium can't diffuse into the cell to balance it out. So what happens is that the water inside the interstitial area gets dragged out to try and balance out that concentration. The fluid's lost. It goes, oh, I'll replenish some of it. And the water drags out of the cells, which means the volume inside the cells goes down and the cells become dehydrated. So you can see here, just by a quick run through of showing where these ions can move and where they can't move, altering the fluid balance. It highlights the importance of maintaining adequate fluid volume. 
also maintaining adequate concentration of ions and electrolytes as well. So hopefully you enjoyed this mini lecture on fluid balance. Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. We've got hundreds of others just like this. If you want to contact us, please do so on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Dr. Mike Todorovic at D-R-M-I-K-E-T-O-D-O-R-O-V-I-C. Speak to you soon.